to gather together in the house of the Lord. And today is the day that the Lord has made. And we're actually going to be singing a song just in a few moments that is titled just that. And it is true and good. My name is Adam Williamson. I'm the worship arts director here at BCC. And if you're if we've never met, I'd love to shake your hand, maybe take you out for a cup of coffee, uh, but not right now because we've got some worshiping to do. So if you could stand up, find somebody that you didn't come with, that you don't know, give them a high five, a hearty handshake, a hey, how you doing? And we're going to honor our awesome God and King.
church family have a seat it's time for our moment of prayer this morning sorry about my voice I don't know <laughs> what happened this morning but yesterday we had city serve at Valley Elementary we started off covering that school in prayer 
praying for the faculty, the teachers, the students, their families, just covering that school in prayer. It was a blessing. People walked around the school praying. And then we wrote encouraging notes to some of the faculty and all the teachers. We covered every teacher with a note of encouragement, thanking them for ministering to our children. People were trimming trees and cleaning windows and picking up trash and edging the sidewalk. And John went out and bought new nets for the basketball hoops that were ratty. He said they were ratty, ratty and tatty or something like that. Anyway, it was a wonderful time. And this morning, since school is about ready to start, we are going to be praying for our schools. So Proverbs talks about the importance of, of knowledge, the importance of wisdom, the importance of understanding. School's vital to, to learn because we don't want to have a doctor that just does it on the wing. It's, it's hard enough when he goes through all those years of school, right? So, you know, there are, there are, there's a reason for education. We need to be able to read, to read our Bible. And that's how school started, so that kids could learn to read their Bibles. So we're going to be praying for our schools this morning. So, Just a thought, as we send them off from preschool to high school, colleges and universities, they might be hearing some things that are not line, that don't line up with God's Word. So we want, we want to be praying for that as well, that they, that they would not be succumb to that programming of the enemy and also for the parents to have wisdom to know you know how to make sure that their kids are are safe not only physically but it's spiritually and emotionally so let's just take a moment and pray and then I will close Father, we thank you for the children. Lord, you said, suffer not the little children to come unto me. The children were very special to you. And they are very special to us, Lord. We pray, Father, that you go with every one of them. From preschool through the university, Lord, that your presence fills them and overflows them. We pray for your angels to guard about, guard them as they travel to and from and while they're there, to keep them safe physically. But we also pray, Father, that you would keep them safe emotionally and spiritually as well. Lord, we um, set our hearts to continue to lift up these schools and lift up our kids to you, Lord, and lift up the families, the parents, as they raise those children, Lord, especially those of us who we don't have little ones at home anymore. Remind us to be faithful, to keep them in prayer, Lord. Father, we just ask you to bless the children that are in this building this morning. That when they go to school, they know that you are with them, you are for them, and you are in them. And for all these things, we give you praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And everyone said, Amen.
Jesus had went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that be James and John, he began to be sorrowful and troubled, and he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face praying, saying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for a day of worship where we can come into your presence, into your gates with thanksgiving and praise, and truly say, Great is thy faithfulness. Lord Jesus, thank you for your faithfulness and glory to the cross for our salvation. As we pause today for the Lord's Supper and we reflect on what you've instituted for us, that we pause and do this in remembrance of you, that we take the cup and we reflect on that, which was the blood shed on the cross of Calvary, to know that it is a new and everlasting covenant. We do it in remembrance of you and then to take the bread and know that your body which was broken for us, that we take it as a reminder to reflect on the cost of that salvation. And I pray that as we live out our faith on this side of heaven, that we sharpen our skills as disciples for you, that we're faith sharers, that we're lovers of you, that we love you with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. And then to go and love our neighbors the same. We thank you for this Lord's Supper. I pray as we celebrate it together that you would be honored as we do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's tables at the front and the back. Please partake in the Lord's Supper.
Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Please have a seat now as we transition into our announcements. us this morning at Beaver Creek Christian Church. My name is Ashley Walker and I'm the director of Precious Ones Learning Center, the Christian Preschool and Child Care Center here at BCC. And before we get to our message this morning, I have a couple of announcements for you. We are officially a month away from the Popcorn Festival, which means it's time to start signing up for slots to serve. Every year, BCC hosts the Kids Fun Area at the Beaver Creek Popcorn Festival, and it's always an incredibly fun time of connecting with local families and kids. We rent inflatables, bring in carnival games, and host entertaining shows for hundreds of kids who visit the festival throughout the weekend. Sign-ups are now live, and I would love for you to sign up yourself, but when you're picking a slot, invite a friend, a neighbor, or a family member to join alongside you as we serve our city at the Beaver Creek Popcorn Festival. So, one last announcement for you. Following our worship gathering, we are inviting anyone who has been visiting BCC for a little while to meet for our first starting point. John, one of our pastors, will host this brief 15-minute time in the kitchen, which is just to the right of the stage, for those who are curious about BCC and are interested in learning a bit more. No registration required. Just walk on over and have a chat with us. Now, with our announcements wrapped up this morning, I also just want to quickly remind you about the different ways that we have to give to the ministry of BCC. Your tithes, donations, and time allow us to continue and grow the ministry of BCC to our city and beyond. So you can give online through the BCC app and website or in person by dropping cash or check in the blue boxes at the back. Thank you again for worshiping with us this morning. Now, let's hear from Ted as he teaches us about goodness, our next fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit works from the inside out, leading, shaping, developing, cultivating in us the character of Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit, who are you becoming under your skin? Good morning, church. My name is Ted. It's my honor and pleasure to be up here sharing the word of the Lord with you, being on the teaching team. If you don't know me, that's okay. My son preaches here. Corey. Yes. I love it when the joke hits. Um, yeah, Corey. Corey. Uh, has spoken the last couple of summers, and that's kind of a funny joke to me. Someone asked me, like, you know, do you preach at a church that your son preaches at? But uh, what, you, what you guys may not know is, is God worked out that schedule for me and nobody else in here. When he, when he spoke that week, he, he talked about peace. And just a couple of days, a couple of days after that, my life changed. And it was, it, was, uh, it was very interesting for me to, to rest in that peace and to remember Corey's words and to soak that in when all of these decisions that I was sorting through came apart on me. So it was really great. It was really great. I hope this Sunday means the same to you as it did to me that, that week. Uh, again, thanks to all of you that were with us yesterday at Valley Elementary. That was such a great moment where, where all these people were coming together and loving on the community, cleaning and, and praying and, and pouring goodness 
into, into the local area. It was, it was awesome. Um, I, hope, I hope you have seen the, the community in this serve the city. And I, and I just invite you all, like our big events coming up, right? The, the popcorn festival and what we do there. So I'd encourage you to sign up and do part of that. And you're going to hear tons about that. You'll get tired of hearing that. But, um, I also want to highlight that M- Mavudo, uh, the Jambalosi family, M- Mavudo was here a few weeks ago and he spoke. And that was really encouraging to me that he kind of interrupted our series on the fruits of the spirit. And he didn't have a fruit, but he talked about being connected to the fine and, and how, how fruit comes out of that. It was, it was so beautiful to me. I hope you enjoyed that as well. And so we're continuing on in our series, Peeled, uh, a study in the fruits of the Spirit. We're going to be uh, we're going to be in that today. Just as a reminder, Galatians five is where we get this list: the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And goodness is where we're going to rest today. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about goodness. And I want to start in Genesis. If you know anything about me, if you hang out with me for a while, you're going to get some sort of Genesis reference because that is who I am and what I think about a lot. And that is where we, where we see God calling his creation good. It is good. He creates the heaven and the earth, the light and the sky. The water, the ground, the lands, the plants, the sun and the moon. The animals, and you might remember, he makes mankind, man and woman. And God references that. He says that all that he had made, it was very good. God made man. It was no accident. It was no accident. God made man. Consider that for a minute. We are his creation, and he describes his creation, man and woman, mankind, as good. We see a lot of good in the early parts of God's story. He uses that word to describe his creation in Genesis. It's an adjective he uses over and over again. And one fun aspect of that that I want to call out, or it's unique to me in this conversation of good and goodness, is that the first time he says that something isn't good is when he sees that, that man and woman are separate. It's not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. God uses the word good over and over. It's in the Bible everywhere. There's a phrase that this community probably knows. I, I'm going I'm to call it out to you. God is good. And all the time, you know this. Yes, it is in your culture. It's in your community. It's in your traditions. It's in your words. You don't have to think much about it, this relationship between God and good. Another one that's a favorite of mine, Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. There's a, a story in Genesis that I, that I think is helpful too, right? Genesis, so many stories. Joseph gets sold by his brothers, Joseph uh, comes into power, and his brothers reconnect with him, and there's this moment where they kind of realize what's going on, and, and Joseph reveals himself to him. And Joseph says, you intended harm for, to me, but God had intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done for the saving of many lives, so then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Keep going into, into uh, the discussion of kings and, and leaders. And in Second Chronicles, there's this king named Asa. The Bible says Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord, his God. He removed the foreign altars and the high places. He smashed the sacred stones. He cut down the Asherah poles. Jump to the New Testament. John's gospel records Jesus as saying, I am the good shepherd Matthew, Mark, and Luke all recount a story where this man comes to Jesus, this young ruler, sometimes described as a rich young ruler, that he comes and he's like, how do I get into it? How how do I get the eternal life? How do I get into heaven? How do I do this? Good teacher, tell me, tell me. Jesus is like, why do you call me good? Why do you call me good? Only, no one is good except God alone. Those are just a few of the many, many references where God and good are connected together. 
But I don't think that captures how I see the fruit of the Spirit described as goodness. I think, I think about it this way. Goodness is this trait that allows us, allows God to see the positive. More specifically, to see, to see opportunity and choices and positive outcomes in situations. It is a bright future that's available and open to all of us. That is goodness. And the difference between good and goodness. To me, goodness is this forward-looking image, this forward-looking perspective of, of choices and opportunities. John talked about kindness last week. He talked about the leper and Jesus and his interaction with this leper, if you remember that, that Jesus goes to him, Jesus goes to the leper, and he touches him before he heals him. This, this action of touching and showing love and representing kindness before the healing. The power of the Holy Spirit allows all of those things to play out. Goodness and kindness. I see goodness, excuse me, I see kindness as this, as this very action-oriented. You, you do kind actions, and, and that's what John played out. But I see goodness as more of this, of this spirit inside of us, of this emotion or, or perspective inside of us. Let me try to describe it with some, with some stories from the Bible. Exodus 33, Old Testament, Moses. He's leading the nation of Israel. He's leading God's people out of Egypt. Those people who are made in God's image, those people that, that uh, are good. Now, now, at this point in the story, the Ten Commandments have been given. There's this set of rules and structures and guidelines and behavior that are there. Moses is, is sorting through that, and then the people make some poor choices. People create a golden calf. They worship that idol and not their God. Moses, he's going back and forth with God, and he's got this conversation that's playing out over a number of days and a number of, of, of uh, locations in a, in a tent and up on a mountain, and God's exacting standards come to bear, and God, God brings some punishment and judgment on people, and Moses is trying to sort it all out, and God's like, all right, Moses, we're going to take the people out of here, we're going to move on, and I'm going to send my angel to guide you and lead you. And Moses is he's he's not sure what all this what are the, what all this means and the leadership burden that he's bearing here and he says God teach me how to lead who should I lead Moses says to God you've been telling me lead these people but you've not let me know whom you will send with me you said I know you by name and I found favor that you found favor with me but if you're pleased with me teach me your ways so I might know you and continue to find favor with you remember that this nation is your people Moses and God continue to discuss and Moses is very concerned about this future he's very concerned about the nation of Israel and what's going to happen to them and who will lead them and how they will lead them and what will play out there he says, God, how, how will your people be any different from all the other in the land? Moses cries out to God, show me your glory. And in verse 19 of that chapter, God relents. And he tells Moses, I will cause all of my goodness to pass in front of you. I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. God passes by him, and he makes a covenant with Moses. And that story continues to today, God and his people and how they interact with each other. I love that God's promise and hope for his people is filled with this phrase of goodness and paired with his mercy on top of us. I find it so beautiful that God uses this word to describe himself. He could have said a lot of things. In all of my power, I will pass in front of you. In all of my beauty, I will pass in front of you. In all of my strength, 
I will pass in front of you. There's so many words God could use to describe himself as Moses takes in this lesson of of how to look forward and how to move forward into a place of uncertainty and how to lead people and how to, how to, to process what's going on around him. God says, all of my goodness. Because God is for his people. He is for you. He cares about you. Despite our ability and tendency to turn away from him, to generate our own calf, to worship the things that are not him, he is full of goodness. And if we can tap into that, like Mavudo said, that, that he is the vine, that if we remain in him, then we can bear fruit. We've been, we've been using a, uh, a, 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 a phrase to kind of remind you of this and this fruit of the Spirit conversation, to grow down, draw up from God, and to go out into the world. Stay connected to the vine, draw out his goodness, and go and share that with the world. We sang about it this morning. We continue to sing about it and praise God in his goodness. And how you might consider the evidence of God's goodness, that it is all over your life. That you see his promises and fulfillment. The goodness of God. Some more goodness phrases to help you get into this this mindset of the difference between good and goodness. The 23rd Psalm. You're very familiar with it, right? The Lord is my shepherd. The end of that Psalm, surely your goodness... And love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness, goodness. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, encourages his fellow believers. He's trying to, he, he, he's trying to help them. He talks of unity. He talks of togetherness. Messages that would reverberate today and in the divisiveness of our, of our culture. He says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace when you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit that I am convinced, brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with the knowledge and competent to instruct one another, filled with goodness. BCC, do you you consider yourself to be filled with goodness? Let me tell you a little bit about my Jesus. John chapter 1, John chapter 1, that famous chapter you're familiar with, right? I, excuse me, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That chapter, you guys all know that, right? Later in that same chapter, in those same words, Jesus, he's gathering up his disciples, and I think we we see a clear reflection of Jesus and his goodness. I want to point you to that. You see, Jesus is, is gathering his disciples, and he asks this guy named Philip to follow him. And Philip, Philip jumps in. He does. And he's so excited that he goes and he gets his buddy, his buddy Nathaniel. And he does what I do a lot, and what I think many of you might do as well. His buddy Nathaniel makes a judgment about the person before he meets him. He makes a judgment about, about this this what possibly this person could be before he has any idea about him. Philip, he's super excited, right? Jesus Jesus does not do the things that we do. He sees goodness in people. That's what the story draws out. Let me share it with you. Pick up in John 1, verse 45. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We found the one Moses wrote about in the law, about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathaniel says, Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip says, come and see, come and see. I don't know if you've ever judged anybody by where they're from or some other trait like that before you know them. We joke about it around here all the time. That state up north. Can anything good come from Michigan? 
I'm not from Ohio. So that's a fun joke for me, like, I, I like listening to the community kind of engage with each other in this friendly, friendly conversation. But I want to make it a little more personal for me. I grew up in the South. I grew up in Arkansas. Most of America, most of the states, most of the people I come in contact with don't have a high opinion of that place. I was in the military for a long time, always meeting new people, especially when you would deploy. You get in this situation, you meet somebody face to face, and the first thing they ask is, Where are you from? I'm from Arkansas. Hmm. <laughs> Never been there. And they'd move on. I learned to pivot from that story to something else quickly to help fill the void, fill the void. But I can relate to this interaction. I can relate to this story about judgment and geography. Philip says he met this guy. He's amazing. He's the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. Nathaniel, Nazareth. Who good can come from Nazareth? We see Jesus full of his goodness in this next verse. When Jesus saw Nathanael, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus sees the good in Nathaniel. He sees hope and promise. He encourages him from the first word. Jesus does not see the mean words that were spoken about him in the verse immediately. In the minute before Nathaniel meets him, Nathaniel has this in his head, like, what good can this guy be? And Jesus says, ah, oh, look at Nathaniel, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. That is the picture of goodness. Jesus points forward, not backwards. He points at the hope and the promise that we can all have in this relationship with him. Many of you know that, that I'm connected to a, a prison ministry. That is the, the message, and I think that's why goodness stood out to me in this series. I'm like, yeah, I'll take goodness. That God, God wants those men to know that they have opportunity, that they have a future that he loves them, regardless of whether they're from Arkansas. Regardless of what they have done, regardless of who they are, what background they are, what neighborhood they lived in, or what acts they committed, or in Nathaniel's case, literally the words they say before they meet Jesus, that he loves them. It is a humbling experience to carry that message. But they are set free in Christ. They are set free in Christ. Jesus came to set the prisoners free. We studied Luke a while back. Luke 4 was the anchor of that conversation. Jesus, in, 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 in the Gospel of Luke, it plays out this scenario where Jesus stands in front of his local church. And he reads from the scroll of Isaiah, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery for the sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of Lord's favor. Goodness is the lens that Jesus looks at all of you. It allows him to see us as someone who might share his love with others. And it is the fuel that should encourage you to share that love with others. My house is full of teachers. 
My wife, Christy, is a teacher. My oldest daughter, Riley, is a teacher. My second daughter, Mary, is a teacher. Apparently, my son, Corey, is a teacher. We'll see how Lucy turns out. I'm surrounded by teachers. And I, and I, again, as you consider goodness, I want you to think about that. Teachers see good in their students. Teachers enter into this conversation not knowing what walks into their classroom or who walks into their classroom or where they're from or what's going on. And they see goodness and hope and promise. School starts on Monday for many of you, many of the families. Raise a hand if you got a kid going to school or a, you're a parent of a kid going to school or something. I got like, okay, all right, yeah, there's a handful of you in here. More than just one for sure. Boy, t- today was, was one of those moments, a little small ceremony that, that those families, some of those families were invited to today when, when, when the kindergartners promote into first grade. We do, Christy, Christy led a, a small informal ceremony. We call it upgrade. One of those milestone moments. We give the marble. You guys remember the marble sometimes? We talk about that. It was one of those moments, and that happened today. And that's one of those, I just want to reflect and rest like that. This is one of those times, this is one of those moments when, when kids transition from kindergarten to first grade. We mark it. We give the kids a Bible. Christy and the church gives the kids a Bible. And those Bibles were filled with with highlights and marks of Christy's favorite verse, the teacher's favorite verse, some of the parents' favorite verse. And it's this word of encouragement. And it is this symbol of goodness, of how teachers, how they look at the kids with hope and opportunity and excitement It's that same goodness that God looks at you with. It's the same goodness that God looks at you and says, man, I'm so excited about you and your future. I'm so excited about what you're going to do. Goodness that our Lord is full of. It, It is the light that pushes out the dark. Goodness is this lens that you see the world and allows you to see opportunity and and hope in others. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, when you are connected and you draw up that goodness, you can see it. You can see the opportunity in everyone around you. I'm going to ask the band to come back up get ready for worship again here, but let me, let me end us with one other little conversation here. That when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, that you can tap into this, to this perspective, this, this goodness that he has. And we're, we're, starting, we're starting school as a community. And many of you are going to have new, new relationships, new opportunities Maybe, maybe you don't have the kid's story, but I guarantee you, you're going to meet somebody new this week. You're going to have a chance to enter into a relationship with them in some way. And I want to encourage you to reflect on this moment of goodness. How do you see them? Even if they literally were disparaging you in the words before. Like you have the choice to enter into that relationship with the Spirit of Jesus. To draw down grow down, connect to the vine, and draw up his his power, his goodness. I, I would encourage you, if you're a parent, to encourage your kids in that same way. Like, they're gonna have new experiences. They're gonna have new relationships. And how they look at those people, based on what they wear, who they are, where they came from, like, that's all gonna happen. And you have the chance to encourage them in goodness. And, and this is the, one of the tougher parts of the conversation. You might say, but, but Ted, if I do that, if I, if, I, if I enter into that relationship in all of this positive way, then I don't know who those people are, and they're going to hurt me. They're going to say something I disagree with. They're going to break my trust. 
Yes, they will. They will. But that's the same story between Jesus and us, right? The hope and goodness covers that. God, in all of his goodness, passes in front of you and has mercy on you. Rest in that truth that Jesus looks on you with the same hope and promise. There's a, there's a blessing in the book of Numbers. We say it a lot in church. It's kind of a, it's a popular song these days. I want to I end in that and, and, and kind of how that song goes because I think it's really important. May, you, you guys have heard it, but think about it in these ways. Like, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord, Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and gracious to you for a thousand generations, to your family and to your children. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and your rejoicing, may his presence go before you. May his goodness go before you. Why? Because he is with you. He is for you. God is with you and he is for you in all of his goodness. Amen. I want you to rise and worship with us.
joining us, worshiping alongside us. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to do that each and every week. Um, we do have a few quick corrections. Our starting point is actually going to be the 20th, so that is in seven days from now, not this this evening, or not, the, not directly after the service now, but if you were planning on coming to that or wanted to talk to somebody, find any one of us. Well, I'm not a good example because I don't have my orange lanyard on. It's somewhere else. If you see several people around, it's, it's key people in our leadership here at the church, elders, uh, prayer warriors, ministry servants, uh, and staff members might have one of those lanyards on. So if you wanted to come to that, and you might not know if you're going to be here next week, grab one of them. And speaking of our prayer team members, we have a prayer room that we have open and dedicated every week following our services. If you need to discuss something going on in your lives, we try to, we hope that we provide an atmosphere here where you're able to leave luggage and baggage at the door and just openly worship at the foot of the cross. But we also know that life is hard. So if you want to talk to somebody, we have dedicated an amazing prayer warriors, part of our prayer ministry, that would love to sit down and talk with you and envelop you in prayer. Um, and one last and final correction or addition to our announcement video regarding our popcorn festival. If you're new to the area, to the Beaver Creek area, that's an annual festival that is that is community-wide. There are There's plenty of popcorn and all the variety of popcorns you could ever imagine. And BCC, we host a kids area that has inflatables and face painting and a, and a bunch of fun. But we're actually doing something very unique and different this year. We are partnering and collaborating with, as of right now, uh, five other churches and faith-based organizations to put on a community worship experience Sunday morning September 10th on the stage at the Popcorn Festival. So we will not be holding. Absolutely, amen. Um, it has been an incredible opportunity to work with the Popcorn Festival Committee and everybody down to the audiovisual company um, hosting the Popcorn Festival and, and staying after and coming early. And so we are going to we are going to do them right, but they are willing to step out into something that's never been done um, in the however many years that the Popcorn Festival has been going on. But that's an exciting thing that has still has a ton of moving parts. Um, and so we will be giving you more information and you will might see some things popping up on the Popcorn Festival social media and website. And as we kind of get closer and closer to that, but we just wanted to make sure that everyone here mark their calendars uh, to know that if you show up here on Sunday morning, uh, September 10th, uh, nobody will be here. Maybe we'll have a sign or something that says, hey, go to the Popcorn Festival. But uh, that, that experience is going to start at 9 a.m. Um, and go till about 10 a.m. Um, and some really exciting things that we're going to be able to do collaboratively. So just wanted to make sure that you knew about that. Mark your calendars for those of you who are planners, uh, like my wife. So everybody, you know, apologize to her because she has to live with me and I will probably never be a planner in my life. Um, seat of my pants. You know, I don't even know where my shoes are right now. Um, but uh, so just wanted to remind you of September 10th. We will not be here. We will be at the Popcorn Festival. If you wanted to, um, if you wanted to talk to anybody, um, the starting point will be next week. And as always, and probably the most important of all, we would love to just pray, pray with you, pray over you, 
get to know you, get to meet you. Um, so go from this place. Um, find out who God has put on your heart to be a neighbor and love them with the love and compassion that was shown to you by Jesus Christ. Have a good week.